Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Now, it seems a little esoteric, so let's define who the third party is. The third party is the person on behalf of whom you are communicating. Let's say, for example, you're at the beach again, and your wife is at the shopping center picking up a few supplies, and your son says, don't forget the M&Ms. So, you get a hold of your wife on your handheld and say, uh, Johnny says not to forget the M&Ms. Who's the third party? The third party is Johnny. You are passing traffic on behalf of Johnny. Now, you're the control operator, of course, but he's not operating. He's not actually speaking to his mom. You're doing the speaking for him. That's why we call this third party traffic. It's sending a message for someone. In the USA, it's okay to do that um, as long as whatever you transmit obeys uh, the rules. It's not uh, prohibitive type stuff. Um, when the American Radio Relay League formed, the relay part of that was because with their transmitters back in the days of Spark, they couldn't get very far with them. So they had a series of relay stations that would join in nets and pass what they call traffic back and forth uh, to get it to where it went. Nowadays, there is still a national traffic system. It still exists. It uh, is not anywhere near as active as it used to be now that long distance telecommunications is so inexpensive. Now, the kicker gets in where you want to pass traffic for a third party when you're talking to a ham in another country. Suppose you know this guy and his wife wants tells uh, her husband to transmit a message to your wife and if he's not in a country that the US has an agreement with it's different for every country now most of the time in ham radio if something is not prohibited it's permitted but this is an example of the opposite of that if it's not permitted it's prohibited uh, because there is a list of countries, and it happens to be in the license manual, a list of countries uh, with whom we can exchange third-party traffic. Um, the list is growing all the time. Uh, if you don't see the country on there that you want to, then uh, go look on the ARRL uh, website for the latest. The list changes all the time. So there you go. That's really all there is to third-party traffic. It can be uh, verbal, it can be written, uh, it can be Morse code, uh, it can be packet, whatever means third party means passing traffic on behalf of someone else. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73. And what's the problem is you can get in trouble for doing that.